Pedro from ENP Reacts. I'm here with Alan Robert from uh, Life of Agony. How's things going? Great, man. We're uh, almost done with our Canadian run. And then uh, we hit New Jersey right before the holidays. And we have a lot of big announcements coming for 2020. Since the album came out in October, you guys, you guys hit the, the road really hard. Uh, how's the fan reception been to the new tracks? It's been amazing. Uh, you know, even before the record came out, we started playing a new song, Empty Hole. And... Uh, the circle pits that erupted every night just from the very first note uh, has been really uh, validating that we were on the right path uh, with the with the new music and the direction that we went to uh, with Sound of Scores. How difficult it was for you guys to put this record together considering the concept behind it? It came, came along really organically actually. We were about I think three or four songs deep in the writing process when I brought up the idea to the band to uh, make this a concept record. Everyone really liked it. Um, it just made sense. Lyrically, um, there was already hints within the lyrics of, uh, you know, reflecting on your past and um, coping with things that haunt you from your past so th there was this commonality between the songs that we were writing that it just made sense and um you know we've met so many fans over the years that the music has helped them um get through some dark times and uh a lot of survivors and we're survivors in a lot of ways and um that's what this whole record is about and what if the you know the troubled teen on river on dread survived and um, really taking that idea and really exploring it uh, in every sense. The, the, the album continues pretty much where the, the original album left off as far as the story is concerned. Why did it take you guys so long to go back to that story? Everything that we do, um, you got to really believe in. And um, it, if you don't, there's no point in doing it, you know. And uh, this is just an idea that happened that we all uh, felt felt right to us in our hearts um, to to revisit the the narrative, but take the music in a in a different direction. You know, we never wanted to uh, copy what we've done before. We want to evolve and we want to explore new things. Sure, there's certain elements of the music that um, you know we listened to the old records when our, our new drummer joined the band. And um, it reminded us of certain songwriting elements that we kind of abandoned along the way. Um, so that was kind of eye-opening to us. Like, how come we don't do these heavy background vocals anymore? How come we don't uh, have these odd time um, breakdowns? Um, you know, as you write from record to record, uh, we don't go back and listen to our own stuff. But... You know, when Veronica joined the band, it gave us an opportunity to really listen to the older stuff with fresh ears, and um, and we learned from it. And we were like, you know, it, we love playing those songs live, those old songs with the background vocals and stuff. Um, it's so much fun to play live. It would be great to be able to do that with the new material too. And you'll see uh, later tonight, um, the new stuff fits with the old stuff in the same set so smoothly um, uh, it complements each other the album to me felt uh, it's definitely a journey but it felt like a very emotional journey and it, it became uh, more emotional as it progressed do, do you agree with that? well the sequencing is uh, definitely a big part of the whole concept record it tells a story and it takes you from point A to point B and um, there's certain things that happen throughout the album that have highs and lows, and um, that was done purposely. And and uh, everything that we've done um, to create this record was very thought out. And uh, even uh, going, uh, you know, across the country to record drums with Sylvia Massey. You know, she's a producer that we want to work with for. Uh, I think going back to the Ugly record, she was on our list, and just scheduling never worked out. Um, it's going to get loud in a bit. Um, but, um, you know, and then we mastered the record analog and, as opposed to digitally with uh, Howie Weinberg, who did um, Master of Puppets and 
Nirvana is never mine. So we were uh, very um, specific about the tones and the sounds that we wanted to capture for the record. Um, it does have a more of a 90s feel than um, some of these slicker uh, new rock records. Um, and that was done purposely to really capture that warmth, that body, um, those organic drum sounds. It, 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 it helps tell the story better. Yeah, I think so. It, it, you put on the record and you know what record it is. It's not just a cookie cutter, um, you know, sound that's been done before time and time again. It's, it has a unique sound and that's what we were after. Uh, going beyond the record, now into the title of the record, I thought the title was really interesting because you have Sound of Scars, which could be SOS, which technically the sound of your scars would be an SOS to the people around you. Uh, at what point in time did you guys nail down that title record? Because to me, the title record is as, as interesting as the record itself. Um, I, I think it came along um, after... A few songs were written um, and yes the SOS thing um, wasn't done intentionally it was something that we kind of hit us after the fact and we we're like that's cool <laughs> um, you know we started naming some files and you know shorty you know LOA SOS this and we're like oh okay that makes sense um, a lot of things happen that way um, you know even the release date of the record you know we delivered the, the album to Napalm and they gave us a release date just sandwiched in between two other releases they had and uh it fell on october 11th which was 26 years and one day difference from river on dread which i mean you can't even make that up <laughs> uh so it was kind of cosmic in that way do you feel like the music that you guys created over the years and specifically now on this record is the sound of your own scars of your individual scars but also at the band's scars yeah i think um you know as you know every song um that we write is so personal um and honest and brutally honest at times um it represents a, a lot of scars and a lot of trauma and overcoming issues in your life and I think it's done in a way that a lot of people can relate because you know the the feedback that we've gotten from our fans over over many many years now is that people needed a life of agony record when they felt most alone and by listening to the songs they felt less alone and um and that's what pulled them out of the dark times and that means everything to us you know and because you know i've never been shy about uh my own depression and uh, it's something that i deal with on a day-to-day -day basis um even when things are going great so in a lot of ways the music has also helped me get a, a, out of dark times because uh, writing these words is a cathartic experience in the first place and to know that it helps someone else is even more important where you guys go from now I mean like you're you're reaching the end of, of the year the album is out the, the the response has been incredible everybody that I talk to has loved the record I love the record one of the best Thank albums you. of the year uh, what's the plans for the band now as we look into uh, 2020 um, like I said, we have a lot of announcements coming for the new year. Uh, we definitely want to be out on the road as much as we can supporting it. And um, a lot of fun things are in the works right now. Um, and not just uh, touring wise, but other things that we're working on behind the scenes. And um, yeah, 2020 is going to be great. Thank you very much for your time, Alan. I really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Great album. If you haven't picked it up yet, go pick it up. Amazing record. Congratulations. Thanks, brother. Thank you.